Welcome to Change It Up Radio, here with Paula Shaw. I'm very, very happy to have you here with me today. This is a very special show to me. It's been a very difficult week for my family and I, because we had to say goodbye to Wicket Bear Shaw, Wiki for short. He's been our little guy for 16 years. And today I want to talk about him and others like him and what they do for we humans in in so many cases. So first of all, I do want to welcome you to the show. As you know, I'm Paula Shaw, your host. I am an author, a speaker, a life transition coach. And what's different about the way I work with people is that I use the tools of energy psychology if they are open to that. You don't have to be using energy tools to do work with me. But what I have learned over the years is that they help people move so much more quickly. They help people to um, really make the shifts they want to shift in their behavior and their thinking and their emotions in a much more rapid time than just talk therapy. So that's my specialty. I'm a founding member of the Association of Comprehensive Energy Psychology. And you know, we've been studying and trying to teach the world in many ways for many years that when you shift energy and you shift light, you truly shift a person on every level. And it's because my belief in that is so strong me, that I've created the books that I have written my two of the books that tie in most with what we're going to be discussing today are grief when will this pain ever end and boy i'll tell you i knew that one firsthand this week and then also saying the right thing when you don't know what to say this is such a handy little book to have with you all the time to help you during those difficult conversations that involve people's feelings. Because there really are some very definite things that are helpful to say. And then there are things that you absolutely don't want to say because they either hurt someone's feelings, destroy their safety in the conversation, or end up making you feel like you're preaching or teaching and nobody wants to receive that when they're in any kind of discomfort or emotional pain. So saying the right thing when you don't know what to say, I think is a must for everybody out there. So I'm calling this show today, Wicked Bear Shaw, A Tribute to Love because that's what this little fellow was. He, uh, I called him my grand dog because my daughter got him when she was around 20. And uh, he has been part of our family for the last 16 years. So I want to share a lot about Wicket with you today. We called him Wiki for short. (laughs) <laughs> because Wicket actually came from one of the Ewoks in the Star Wars series. But, you know, so often people think they're hearing Wicked and they just didn't quite get it because there's nothing about this little guy that wasn't totally angelic. So most of the time we just called him Wiki. By the way, I did also want to tell you that If you'd like to learn more about this show or hear past shows, because we have had some of the most wonderful people on this show with great messages and great information, you can hear past shows on changeituprradio.com. That's changeituprradio.com. And on that 
website, you can also get information about our listeners, information about being a guest or a sponsor of this show. So be sure you check out changeitupradio.com. It'll give you a lot of information um, about our show, about what our goals are. The bottom line is, boy, I was put right up against this week the very thing that this show is all about. I created this show, Change It Up Radio, because change is a tricky thing for we humans. On the one hand, we got to have it for growth, to keep life interesting, you know, just to give us a reason to get up every day. <clears throat> but on the other hand, we hate the discomfort of the unfamiliar. It's so humans have this love-hate relationship with change. And the worst kind of change for us is that which comes unexpectedly or very suddenly out of the blue. And this is Thursday today as I sit here before you. And just four days ago, on Sunday, my daughter was at my doorstep with a very sick little guy, our 16-year-old Wiki, who had this very, very bad cough that he couldn't seem to shake. And we had tried many things, but it was just looking like Wiki didn't have the ability to fight anymore. He couldn't find the energy, the will, whatever he needed to get well. And that put us face to face with one of those changes that you most hate to experience in life, and that's death. Death is never a welcome, well, that's not true. There are occasions when death is welcome as far as putting someone or some being out of pain. And that truly was the case with us. But what death means is not usually welcome because what death means is a separation from this being that you love. And there's so many different dimensions of what you go through. You know, there's there's the kind of the shock and the reckoning with the reality, the, the gosh, unpleasant isn't even a strong enough word, you know, the, the horrible reality of what's going to come or what needs to come. And, you know, it was such an interesting experience for my family this week. Um, such an experience of growth because when humans are very, very sick and they eventually die or transition to the next experience, we don't have any control over that. We, we hurt for them when they're hurting. We, we hate to see them suffer. But pretty much you just have to ride it out until the end. But it's a different situation with animals because we, we have the option of euthanasia with animals and we don't have that option for humans. And it's very interesting because on the one hand, it's such a wonderful option because it can keep a, a creature from having to suffer and agonize and you know we've all seen deaths with people we love where they it just dragged on and on and on and there was no joy no light no quality of life and yet our system has to try to keep us alive as long as possible and so i got a phone call from my daughter at about midnight Saturday night. And she said, I'd like to come down tomorrow. I think that it's time and, and I, I need your help. And of course we were both in tears at the very prospect of what that meant. 
um, my world immediately went upside down. All the plans I had for the next day were immediately gone. And my world then became about this one thing. How do I help my child and, and help my grand dog have the smoothest and, and most beautiful experience possible as we face this very painful, difficult experience? And it's interesting, you know, it's just so interesting how your life's buzzing along, you've got your plans, you've got the things, you know, you, you're all concerned about getting done or that you need to do. And then boom, some huge thing comes along and stops you dead in your tracks. And suddenly all of that means nothing. There's only one focus. There's only one thing that is important enough for you to put your attention on. And it's this pain. In this case, it was this pain my daughter was in, the pain Wiki was in, and then it became about the pain that I was in as well, and my son. Because the upside of love is that it expands your world and makes everything better and makes your life so much more worth living. The downside of love is that losing it is an agony like no other. And trying to figure out how to go on with your life without it is not an easy thing to do. And that was exactly what I came up against this week. And what I wanna to talk to you about and why I wanted this show to be a tribute to Wiki because he truly was just a little being of light and love, and he deserves a tribute. So we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to continue the story of Wicked Bear Shaw. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio, here with Paula Shaw. I'm happy to have you here today. I, it's been a tough week, as I, as I said in the last segment, but it's kind of wonderful being able to share from my heart about something that's very real for all of us at one time or another. And I learned some things that I want to share with you this week, and I learned about some things that I want to share. Because whenever we come to an end of life experience, no matter who it is, whether it's a, a mom, a dad, a sister, a brother, a friend, or an animal friend, you know, there, there are some just very interesting things that happen. Reality suddenly shifts. And and many of the things that we thought were so important absolutely go away and could, could not matter at all. And other things that maybe hadn't even crossed our minds become very important. So before I, I talk a little bit more about our wiki, my grand dog, I wanna talk a little bit about animal friends. I love that term <clears throat> because somehow pets just feels a little demeaning or, or not acknowledging the level of importance that these beings really have in our lives. So in studies that have been done, that here are some of the things that they have found are so beneficial about someone having an animal friend. And it's interesting because there are also studies about how important it is at different ages in life. And uh, it seems it gets even more important as, as we get older and our lives are not as busy with children and you know growing up in school and all of those things. 
So some of the things that, that are really beneficial about having an animal friend, companionship, someone to love and someone that you can see every day loves you. And that is so important. You know, especially because sometimes as people go down the road of life, a lot of it becomes about their illnesses, their ailments, the things they wish they could do that they couldn't, they can't anymore. Uh, there becomes a lot that is very insular as you get older, where in the beginning, when you're younger, it's the husband and the children or the wife or the, the school friends, your children's activities. There's so much going on in your life. But as you get older, there's less and less of that busyness, less and less of that activity. And so what then becomes really a focus too often is your health or the lack thereof. It can become a focus that, you know, dwelling on what you wish you could do or wish you had or wish you were rather than being into appreciating each moment of life and living each moment of life. There's a, a Disney movie that came out this year called Soul. I'm sure many of you have seen it. And it's such a lovely movie and, and it has so many beautiful messages, but that was like the, the centerpiece that boy, while we're here, we gotta just suck the juice out of every moment. We've got to just really live it fully, being present, being into it, focusing on what's positive and what's beautiful rather than what we don't have or what's negative or what might happen. There's so much benefit in focusing on the positive. And so we really, really want to rev that importance up in our lives and downplay the things that are not so positive or that don't give us joy. And that's another reason that having an animal friend can be such a good thing for people. It's, first of all, there's somebody you've got to take care of and focus your attention on other than yourself or your illness or the things you can't do or wish you could. There's a motivation to get out of the house because that dog might need a walk. You can get away with a little more of that when you've got a cat or my, my old neighbor used to have a bunny and you didn't walk the bunny very much and you don't usually walk kitties. But having a little dog that needs to get out and get some exercise and see the world can be very motivating to someone who might otherwise stay in bed or sit in their chair or watch TV all day. So that's another thing that's really great. In studies that have been done, they've actually seen that interacting with animals decreases cortisol. And that's the stress hormone. And it's also the one that ages us. So interacting with animals is keeping you young and keeping you more anxiety free, calmer and more joyful. It reduces loneliness, you know, that, that part of life that can become really tough for people. It reduces that and it can lower blood pressure and actually boost your mood, improve your heart. And of course, this is the one thing about having an animal that we all know and that I think is what drives us to keep having an animal friend, even though in most people's lifetimes, they're going to lose several animal friends because they don't usually live as long as we do. But this, they are, in my opinion, the only pure source of unconditional love. No matter what you do, no matter who you are, that guy is going to love you. I will never forget my dog, Sammy. He was our family dog. 
Um, but I, I remember one time I came home, I'd been at the grocery store and as usual, I always took Sammy with me because he'd love to get in the car. And I came home and I'm busy, I'm putting groceries away, I'm getting the dinner going and the children are home and they're doing their homework. And probably two hours after I'd gotten home, somebody said, where's Sammy? And I was like, Sammy, what do you mean where's Sammy? And all of a sudden it hit me in this horrific flash. I had left Sammy in the car, gotten the groceries, came in, got busy and forgot all about him. Oh my God, you can imagine how horrible I felt as I went running out to open the back hatch of the car and let him out. And I was so afraid he was going to be so upset with me. And when he saw me, he just started, oh my goodness, just expressing all this joy and happiness and licking me. And he, there was like no judgment, no, what the hell was that about? It was just joy. He was just so happy to be with me and to come in and be with the children. And that you just can't usually get from people because we get upset, our egos get hurt, we get angry, things happen. And unfortunately, you know, that's, that's understandable with humans and it does come up, but with animals, they are just always there loving you. And I, I have to admit, I'm more of a dog person than a cat person, though I have loved a couple of really great cats in my life and I have had friends with really get great cats. So I understand you feline lovers, but I'm kind of a canine person myself. And uh, one thing I will say is I've always loved that line that says, dog is God spelled backwards. Because I do think they bring that divine love, that love that never goes away. If you forget to feed them or you get home late or whatever you've done, they're still there loving you. And they're still so happy to see you. One of the things that was always a treat with Wiki, my grand dog, was that he was a little Pomeranian. And so when he would see you, he would spin, jump up and spin. And, you know, they're the ones that were so often circus dogs because they just are natural little dancers. They, they love to jump and spin. He would do all that for you when you were getting his food ready. It was like he was such a ball of excitement. He couldn't contain it. He just couldn't hold himself still when something as exciting as his favorite food was about to come, you know, when something as wonderful as um, you're going to play with him or you're going to get him a treat, you know, it was just like too amazingly wonderful. He just had to jump and spin and, and do all the things that he did to express his excitement. But what a lesson about being excited about life. My daughter said the other day, and it was so true, she said, he was a puppy for 16 years. And until just recently, that was his signature. That was his brand. He was puppy full of enthusiasm and excitement and love. And the sweetest face ever, which I'm going to share with you. When we come back from this break, we're going to take in just a moment. But I'm I'm so glad you're here today with me to share this tribute to Wicket Bear Shaw, a tribute to love. There's so much we learn from animals if we just open up to it. There's so much they can teach us. And this little fella most certainly did his job in that department. <laughs> All right, in just a moment, I'll be back and we will continue this discussion about Wiki. See you in a minute. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. <clears throat> I'm delighted to have you here with me today. 
I am talking about my grand dog today, who we recently lost, little Wiki, who was a, just a beacon of light in our lives. And for those of you who are watching the video, I'm going to share my screen right now and show you a picture of this little guy. And that you have got to be able to see is a face that you have to love. Children would, would just stop in the street and want to pet him and wanted to interact with him because he looked like this darling little stuffed animal. He, and when he was very young and when he, and even now when he was healthy and strong, he smiled. He absolutely had a, spot, a smile. And one of the reasons we knew that we were going to have to let him go was because he just wasn't smiling the same way lately. He had a terrible cough and he had arthritis and one of his eyes was a problem and so many things were coming. And I know that many of you have experienced um, being up against that point when you just don't know, you know, is it time? Should I let my little animal friend go? And, and as I was saying earlier, that's such a tough one because we don't have to make those decisions with humans. We don't have to, you know, we just have to ride it out and, and suffer with them until it's somehow magically that time. But with animals, we have a say. With animals, we get to choose whether or not we want to help them get out of pain. And boy, that's a huge choice. Talk about a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because we don't have to let them suffer. It's a curse because having to make that decision and schedule that, that decision, which is what I had to do. I had to schedule the time that the vet would come and, and take Wiki to heaven. And that was grueling. I have to say, it's the only word I can think of to explain it. When, when he first came, there he was, not feeling good, but snuggling with his, his mommy, my daughter, Erin. And he was just so precious every minute of just watching him. This, this picture that those of you who are seeing the video can see, and those of you who are just hearing the podcast, I will post these pictures on the Change It Up Radio Facebook page and my Paula Shaw page. We'll put them everywhere so you can enjoy them too. But this was a picture I really got a kick out of. Aaron, Aaron was actually looking at pictures of him on her phone and he was looking at the pictures of him on her phone too. And I caught a picture of both of them doing that very thing. It was so precious. But this is the little guy. And, and this is one of my favorite pictures too because he's wearing the very attractive little green turtleneck that I got him for Christmas. And he loved that sweater. It kept him nice and warm because his fur had gotten a little sparse in his old age. And he wore that sweater even in his last moments here on the planet. And that really made me happy. I knew he was warm and he was snuggly and that little face is just a face you cannot lo not love. <laughs> I don't know if that was a double, um, if it made sense. But there he was snuggled in his little bed. And, and that was where we had the choice to let him end his life because we chose this in-home in euthanasia. And I'm gonna speak more about that you know, in the next segment. But for right now, I want to just dedicate this segment to talking about Wiki's little life, because this little guy, he crushed it. And it's one of the things that Erin kept saying and her friends were saying, Wiki crushed it in life. Erin got him when he was when she was in college. And of course, I highly protested. I thought she was out of her mind getting a dog at a time when her own life was going to be so busy and when she wouldn't want the responsibility and, and the encumbrance of having a pet. But I have to tell you that 
all the 16 years that she had them, which has been her whole adult life. She grew in so many ways. Her giving, her response, sense of responsibility, uh, putting herself second, being generous in giving this dog everything he needed. And he had, he had problems along the way. So she ended up having to spend a lot of money to try to give him the first class care that he got all his life. But in return, he got to live in a pretty amazing life. She, right after college, went to New York City because her dream was to sing on Broadway. And guess who went right with her? He rode the subway. He walked the streets of New York. He knew Central Park like the back of his hand. He was a little New Yorker. This little teeny, he was a very small Pomeranian and kind of a timid guy, but he could sit there on the subway with the best of them. And then after Erin left New York, she ended up traveling around the US. So as much as he never liked a car ride in his life, he ended up becoming quite the little world traveler or, or at least the US. He, in fact, I crossed the U.S. at least two or three times with Wiki and Aaron. And I know Aaron did some travel on her own with him in the South. The whole trip she took that led to her writing Have Baggage, Will Travel, that was actually based on a trip that she took with Wiki. So he was just a little trooper. I mean, he, he had experiences that many, many dogs will never have. One of my favorite things, when he first came to us, he was about the size of a guinea pig. I mean, he was such a teeny little guy and we had already a fully grown border collie Aussie Shepherd Cross, our beloved Sammy. And Sammy was a good sized dog. He was about 60, 70 pounds. And we had a very big kitchen in the house we were living in. And so that became Wiki's little world because the floors you know, were something that we, wouldn't be easily damaged. And so Sammy would come into the kitchen to play with Wiki, but Wiki was a puppy and you know, he was constantly bugging Sammy and wanting to bite on his tail and all that. And one day Aaron and I were in the kitchen and we literally saw Wiki driving Sammy crazy. And then he, he latched onto the tail, not biting him hard, but Wiki, uh, Sammy just went enough. And we had a little barrier. It was not real high. I think we, we made it out of some boxes and cans and things, but it was just to keep Wiki in the door. We didn't have a baby gate. And Sammy jumped over the barrier trying to get away from Wiki. Wiki was hooked onto his tail and Wiki became airborne and flew over the barrier with Sammy. Aaron and I died laughing. We thought that was the most hysterical thing we'd ever seen. And then one other of Wiki's little moments I'll share with you that was hugely embarrassing, but one of the stories we love to tell now. Aaron and I had gone to the airport to pick up a guy that I was dating who was flying in from Victoria. He was a, a Canadian. And Wiki had this penchant for getting into the laundry baskets the you know, the dirty clothes basket. And for some reason, he particularly liked the smell of panties. Well, I come home with this man that I've recently started dating and all over the living room floor are women's panties. He had gotten into the laundry while we were gone and dragged all these panties out into the living room. And this was the scene that greeted this man that I was dating. Oh my God, I was so humiliated. You've never seen anybody scoot around so fast trying to explain at the same time. It was, it was crazy. Anyway, but that was Wiki, you know? Life with Wiki was always interesting because you never knew if he was going to be freaking out in the car and, and panting like his life depended on it or if he'd get so excited after gobbling water that he might spit it up. You know, you just never knew what was coming. But I will say he ate the best food. Aaron always got him the best food. He ate organic meat. He ate raw. 
he ate, you know, all of these good things. And I think that's the reason why for 16 years, he had a great life. There was not a lot of ailments, you know, it was just in the last year that the arthritis was showing up so badly that he couldn't jump and spin anymore. And he was having some problems with, with his sight. And, you know, it, there just comes a time in life when the, the spirit is willing, but the body gets weak. And that's what ended up happening to this beautiful boy, this little guy that we loved and cherished. But the time came this week, unexpectedly out of the blue, that we had to make the choice as to whether or not to ask him to keep on trying and keep on suffering or to let him go. And as grueling as it was, we made the choice to let him go. And so when we come back from this break, I want to tell you the choice we made, how we did that, because it's something I really want to share with you, because as hard of an experience as it was, it was also as beautiful as it could be. So we will be right back in just a moment, and we'll be talking about that. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. So I've been sharing with you today the journey that I've been on this week as a result of the fact that the time came that we had to let our little wiki go. And for any of you who are just joining us, wiki was my grand dog. He was 16 years a part of this family. And it's not easy to say goodbye to somebody who's meant that to you and who is such an important part of your family. But my daughter, being the gal she is, she did some research and she looked into what is referred to as in-home euthanasia. And I will say this, <clears throat> when I lost my Sammy, who was our family dog, when his time came, I had heard from some friends about that there were some vets who would come to the house. And I have to tell you that everything about that felt really good to me, felt like a great idea because I don't know about your animal friend, but mine never liked going to the vet. Sammy, in fact, would just put on the brakes. He just put his feet out in front of him and, and you really had to tug hard to get him to walk through that door. So obviously, you know, when it's coming to the end of their life, you don't want your animal to be walking into a situation that they've come to hate their whole life. So the idea of actually being able to have someone come to our home, to the place where our our animal was familiar and where, you know, he could be among his familiar things and we could all have that comfort and that privacy. There was no question about that being the way to do it. And so with Sammy, I found a vet, and this was back in 2008, a vet who would come to the house and she was an absolute angel. And it was interesting. It was like he was suffering. He was suffering. He was lying in my lap when she got there. And, but when he saw her, he looked up, he raised his head, even in his pain, and he licked her hand. It was like to say, thank you. I know why you're here. Thank you. And it was, and she was very kind she explained everything to us before anything was done. But we were, as it happened, we had created a nice little place for him to lie down and we'd surrounded him with crystals and flowers and all of that to, to just try and make it more beautiful. But moments before she arrived, he stood up and he walked toward the front door and he, he had a hard time standing up and a hard time walking. 
And I thought, oh my God, he's such a good boy that even now he's trying to go outside to pee. But when we opened the door, he stepped outside and he just raised his little nose up in the air because he loved to smell the fragrances in the air. And it was a beautiful, warm August night and there were big white fluffy clouds in the sky and a full moon, which we also had for Wiki, which was an interesting, an interesting thing for both. And then once he just savored the air, he just began to collapse and I got down under him. And so we ended up doing the whole thing right there on the front doorstep because that was where he was when the vet arrived. With Wiki, my daughter found a group. There actually now are, um, I don't want to call them companies, but it's, it's a, um, they're groups that provide the service of in-home euthanasia. There are several veterinarians in the group. They provide hospice care if your animal needs that. They provide grief counseling. I mean, somebody did a beautiful thing, bringing all the appropriate people together so that you could make one call and get your needs met. And we made that call to a group called Pause into Grace, spelled P-A-W-S. And I have to say that the people that we met there, the doctor, Dr. Courtney Mills, who came to our home, uh, she was like a saint. She was so loving. She was so giving. She took time. She, she cried with us. I mean, she empathized, there was compassion and empathy and just the love of a beautiful human being who understands that other humans are in pain and who wants to do her part to ease the pain of our animal friend. That is the whole reason that we're there. And I can't say enough about her, enough about the, the lovely people, a pause into grace, uh, Brooke, who was my initial contact, Elizabeth Allen, who you will be meeting on this show next week. Elizabeth is a grief counselor that works with pause into grace. She is an author. She's written several books on the love, the, the relationship, the beauty of having an, a friendship with an animal. She's a beautiful human being, and I'm very excited to introduce her to you next week because I think there are still a lot of people out there who don't know that you don't have to go into a sterile medical, clinical, veterinary office when it's time for your animal to be put to sleep. You can have it all done in your own home. And, and I have to tell you, we were able in the backyard, it had to be outside because we're in the middle of a pandemic, but it, that was lovely. You know, we, we had a fire lit in the fire pit. We created a beautiful little area for Wiki to lie in. We were able to see the full moon rising. Um, you know, as I said, it was a grueling experience, but it was as beautiful and spiritual as you could ask a grueling experience to be. And I, I've always joked that bad things happen to me in the best possible way. And I have to say this was right in alignment with this because for me, there were many areas of pain. Certainly losing this little being was, was painful. It was grueling having to wait for the appointed time and the arrival of the vet. It was very, very difficult. But I was also dreading and really concerned about the emotional pain that my daughter was going to be in. Because as I said, she has not known adult life without being the mother of this little guy. 
And I knew it was going to be a really hard loss for her. And my son, you know, he lived through our loss of, of Sammy and they've lost their dad. They've been through too much grief for one so young. And so, you know, my concern was how the experience was going to be for them much more than concern about myself. But I have to tell you that thanks to the kindness, the sensitivity, the beauty of Dr. Mills and the whole organization of Pause into Grace, this experience happened in a way that I can only describe as beautiful and spiritual. And, and while, you know, right up to the last minute, there's a part of you that wants to go, well, no, 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 let's, let's don't do it today. Or let me change my mind. <laughs> but of course you can't do that. And Dr. Mills took such good care of us while we were experiencing our pain from losing Wiki, the, the knowing that it was coming and everything that's part of that experience. And you know, this morning when I was thinking about doing this show, I talked to Erin about it and she said, that would be great. She said, and if you cry, don't apologize because we never apologize when we laugh. And crying is as normal a part of human behavior as laughter. And I said, wow, that is really a great piece of wisdom. I'm going to share that. And should I cry, I won't apologize. So I just want to say that my awareness of, of what is called in-home euthanasia and these groups that provide that was really opened up through this experience. And that's why I wanted to share it with you. Because if you love your animal friend and the day comes when they are in too much pain to go on, I really want you to know about groups like Pause Into Grace, because they really helped us to be able to release our beloved Wiki into grace. So thank you for sharing this journey with me. Thank you for listening. You know, you can find Change It Up Radio on AM 1170, The Answer, and 96.1 FM, The Answer. And we're on every major podcast platform. And next week, I hope you will join me again and meet Elizabeth Allen, who is the grief counselor for Pause Into Grace. Because any of you who love your animals will find a day when you'll be up against what we were. And when that day comes, I want you to have the option of being as blessed as we were in what we experienced. So I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you for being with us. And you stay safe and take care of yourselves. See you next week on Change It Up Radio. Bye-bye.